Since moving to Long Island a few years ago, um, my wife and I have traveled to Lancaster, Pennsylvania a number of times because that's where uh, Elizabeth's parents live. And uh, on our way down there, there is a, a really tricky spot for me. Maybe it's because I'm new to the New York area, but I seem to get lost at this certain point every single time. As I go across the Verrazano Bridge, go through Staten Island, and then I get into New Jersey, I'm put into a whole series of spaghetti bowls where I go round and round. <laughs> and I don't know what, or if, if I'm going north or south or east or west. And then I'm spun around a few more times. I have a choice in one road to go one of four forks <laughs> in the road. And then I end up spinning around at a toll booth where I, made, I have to make the choice to now cross over so many lanes because I got in the wrong lane and now I'm going the wrong direction, going up north on the New Jersey Turnpike. It seems to make my phone spin around too because in that moment it starts to spin and say recalculating, redirecting. And thankfully, GPS is there for me because it helps redirect me. It takes a while sometimes to figure out which wrong direction I'm going, but it recalculates and it renews and it reforms my path to go the correct direction. This is what Jesus is doing, I think, with the Judeans, the Jews that he's speaking to that had believed in him. They were, their minds were going the wrong way with all of this. Jesus was trying to teach them better the gospel and the truth that would free them. But they're caught up on this idea that we've never been slaves to anyone. And instead of correcting them and reminding them that, well, there were those 430 years of being slaves in Egypt, and then those two generations that God's people spent in Babylon as slaves, instead Jesus redirect, redirects them. He helps them reform their understanding so they could better understand the word of God. And he says that actually we're all slaves. All human beings are slaves. Not Jesus, but all humanity are slaves to sin. But we have to change our understanding of what sin is. We often think of sin as just the things that we do that go against what God has commanded or the things that we fail to do in order to do what God wants us to do. And it is that. But it's worse than that, Jesus tells us. We become held captive to these lies. We become slaves to sin. And so we don't have the will or the way in and of ourselves to change. We need Jesus and we need the Holy Spirit to redirect our paths, to reform us in more accordance with the word of God and his purposes. And this is what Martin Luther did, that German monk 500 or more years ago in Germany in the, in the medieval church. He also was calling them to better understand the gospel to redirect God's people away from a works righteousness, the idea that you and I can do enough to please God or be good enough to earn his grace and his love, to do or even purchase indulgences to purchase our way out of purgatory. Martin Luther gave us the good news to reform our thinking that God doesn't want us to go to purgatory. In fact, he said there was no purgatory, but that God wants to save us by his grace as a gift, and that we receive that by grace alone, through faith alone, as our faith is in Christ alone. Freeing us now, not making us slaves to this old understanding, but renewing our minds and our spirits so that we could have the assurance of God's grace 
forgiveness and eternal life. Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. This is the freedom from living our lives uh, from living our lives under lies that we tell ourselves or we tell each other. These, this is a freedom of God creating new neural pathways in our brains, changing our, the way we understand ourselves and the way we understand God. This is what reformation means as we reform our thinking in accordance with the word of God. That means that we might have to change the way we think about God, it more, to be more in accordance with the word of God. The reformers came up with this slogan, Semper Reformanda, or always reforming, that the church is always refining our understanding and our teaching. We're all, we are always reforming how we talk about God, how we understand God, so that it's closer to scripture and the heart of God. This always reforming is even true today, that we are continuing to reshape our thinking to better reflect God's truth that we find in the Word of God. On Friday, I did a 24-hour trip to uh, St. Louis, Missouri to visit my son Daniel at seminary. He just started seminary. It's his first year. And I've been to the seminary campus before. I went to the other seminary <laughs> in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But uh, he uh, gave me a tour. He showed me, I went to a couple of his classes. But I also was reminded of my first visit to Concordia Seminary when I walked up the bell tower that is about 150 years old. And the one giving us the tour said that during the Civil War, C.F.W. Walther, the president of the seminary, hung a Confederate flag on the top of the tower. Thanks be to God that we are in a reformed church, right? That we have reformed our understanding of how we treat one another, how we welcome one another. And eventually it was taken down and now there's, not on the tower, but on the campus there is a flag of the United States of America, but it reminds us of a time when we as a people in this nation understood all people or all men are created equal to be limited just to white men, landowners. But we've reformed as a society, as a country, to now understand that that also includes people of color. We now have women that can vote. So it's not just all men are created equal, but all people are created equal. And so we as the church also have been reforming, always reforming accordance to the word of God. And so did you know that there are still some churches in our denomination that don't allow women to vote? And so we reform our understanding of how not only we do church, but how we see one another, how we welcome the stranger, how we think about God and his grace, how he views us as bearing the image of God no matter where we're from, our gender, that there is neither slave nor free, Jew or Gentile or male and female in Christ. And so what are those areas in your life that God needs to reform? Or our life together as Christ Church? Where are some areas in our lives that we can be more welcoming, more like Jesus, more free to love and accept our neighbors? How can we as Christ Church and as his people change, reform the way we think to better reflect the word of God? This is what it means to be reformed. This is what it means to be Lutheran, that we're always adapting our understanding, not to the newest fad or the change in our culture, but to Holy Scripture, what God's word has to say, and that we adapt that way of thinking 
and by Christ's word and by the Holy Spirit, we create those new neural pathways so that we speak differently and think differently and act more in accordance with the word of God. Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is there's nothing that you and I can do to earn the grace of God. It is completely free. It's a gift. We just lay hold of it by faith, simply trusting God's word. Now we're free to love because Christ first loved us. We have experienced the grace of God. We've experienced the change of ourselves, the change of our minds, the change of our hearts. God has reformed us. And in our conversation and in our life together as God's people, we also adapt and we change, reforming one another, refining one another like iron sharpening iron so that we can better reflect this incredible grace of God that was preserved and cherished by our ancestors, by Luther and all those who preceded us. And now we have the gift that we can pass on to one another in our acceptance and in our love and our welcoming as God's people so that they can know that same Christ who sets us free from guilt, from shame, to be his people, knowing that we have been saved by grace alone through faith alone, for his glory alone. In the name of Jesus, amen.